All right, so we have set up our line art within Photoshop for flat coloring. And we've talked a little bit about what flat coloring is. At this stage, we cannot change our line art. Instead, we can only fill behind it. And because it can be so difficult to color by having to choose the colors from the options within Photoshop, I like to bring in color inspiration. So I'm going to take my inspiration file and I'm going to open that with Photoshop. Now, one way to do that that I usually do is you have these two files open in Photoshop. One is for color inspiration and one is your spot illustration. And you want to set it up with window, arrange, two up vertical. And that will put them side by side and give yourself like a lot of working area. Another way people like to do it, and this works too, is you can just drag your color inspiration into your Photoshop file and then just kind of shrink it into a corner. So it's like a palette right there within Photoshop. Either way, as long as it's open in Photoshop, you can steal the colors right from there. I like this method because I can see it a little bit bigger. Now, how do I set this up? So I'll just rename this color reference. And it's going to be turned off, obviously, when I'm finished with my illustration. So my first layer that I need to build in my sandwich between my black line art and my blank white background is my flat color. Flat color is incredibly important. I'm going to mark my black line art as green. And I'm going to, well, actually, no, I'm going to mark it as gray. And I'm going to mark my flat color as yellow. So it's just easy to find because I'm going to go, be going between these two a lot. Now, I'm going to use my magic wand with contiguous turned on at the default tolerance of 32. And I'm going to click on my black line art, even though it's locked, to choose the shapes I want to color. The first shape is my lines themselves. And I can hold down shift to select multiples of these. But they need to be contained shapes. And I'll know they're not contained shapes if it starts to bleed out and select the background. And the whole point of flat color is to get rid of the whites. It's what I call the kill whitey phase. It's important. Can't make any progress until you kill Whitey. And it might help you remember it. So I'm selecting everything here. That is a contained shape. And I'm holding down shift and I'm using my magic wand. And because the layer is locked, I'm not in danger of accidentally messing up my vector. It's also a smart object, so it won't let me paint on it anyway. So everything, even these teeth, anything that's contained, I'm going to select all in one go. Just careful not to click on the black. Oh, then there's this eye. Mine has a lot of shapes, right? A lot of independently contained shapes. So I'm hoping will make the coloring pretty effective. All right, now, oh, I got the arrows. Go ahead and select those too. And you can use Command-0 to get back to fitting it all on the screen. Now when that's selected, I'm going to move that selection. Right, The selection is there of all my contained shapes, I'm going to move that selection and click on my flat color layer. And then I'm going to use the paint bucket tool, which you'll find underneath your eraser. It's underneath the gradient tool. It's the second one down. And when I'm on the paint bucket tool, it's going to fill my selection with a flat color, or whatever my foreground color is. But I want to select my color. And so to do that, I hold down Option, and I can click on
a color from this inspiration file. A nice little orange there. And then I just drop it in. And it fills it all up. Now I get to see if I missed anything. So Command-D, deselect. Turn on my line art. Up, oh, I missed a part of the tongue. And I missed that little stripe. So this is different than coloring your logo because we're actually creating new pixels on a new layer at a high resolution. So to color in that tongue, what do I do? I go to my black line art layer, I use the magic wand. Then I'm going to scroll over and I'm going to also get this stripe. Hold down shift. Now they're both selected. Just to show you, I'll turn that layer off. You can see the little marching ants around those two areas. Then I'm just going to use my my paint bucket and I'm going to drop them in, drop them in. Now everything that is contained and easily colored is colored. Almost. <laughs> because the inside of the eyeball is contained. The highlight on the eye is contained. The star is contained. So I can fill those with color too. So let's do that. I'm going to use the magic wand. Going to select that, going to hold down shift, select this, select this. Are there any other contained shapes? These are all individual, even though I've already selected them, right? What's cool about doing it this way is that they're all independently filled tiles that can be easily changed to different colors. But now these shapes. Let me fill with a different color. So I can use the paint bucket, hold down option. This time I'm going to use this kind of weird yellow. Go to my flat color, drop it in, drop it in, drop it in. Maybe choose another color like this white, drop it in for the highlight in the eye. Or for the teeth. If I deselect, now I don't even need my black line art layer. I can just use my magic wand and I can just drop colors in. Now, why am I coloring with white? Well, because it's not really white. It's slightly different. It's like a pearl color. And there are no whites in this image. So we are killing the whites. We're filling them in. And sometimes we're filling them in with white. <laughs> but we're making all those choices. At this point, it is helpful for me to make two copies of my blank white layer, like add more bread to the bottom. And I'm going to add a piece of black bread to the bottom by filling in one of those copies with black. Edit, fill, black, 100%. So I can see what my flat colors look like on black. And then the one underneath that, I fill with gray. Edit, fill middle gray, 100%. And I'm going to lock both of those. And then I can turn them on and off as I need. Right? So I might, right now I might keep it on middle gray and turn my line art on. So now what happens if I click on the other part of my illustration? Because there are openings in it, not that many openings, but very clear openings, like here, big opening, because it's a maze, and here, big opening. If I try to fill that in with a color, let's use like a background color like blue, hold down Option, select it, go to my flat color, drop it in, then it kind of defeats a lot of the purpose because now all of this is on my flat color layer. That blue, it's all here now. And that gray is showing underneath. Oh, there are two other contained shapes I can fill, which I should. So let me do that quickly. Go to my black line art layer. It's important to go to the black line art layer because that's going to give you a space between everything. And then let's do red. Why not? Because again, when you're doing flatting, it doesn't really matter what the colors are. It gives you easy access.
to that. Okay, so let me show you the difference. If I don't use going to my black vector line, it will fill in like that. It will go right to the edge, which can work. But I like more using my magic wand, selecting it as the empty space in between my black vector, which is perfectly clean, then going to my flat color, and then dropping the color in. Same thing here. So what's that difference? So it looks like this rather than the whole thing filled in. Same thing with this one. And you can select from it even though it's locked and a smart object and then drop it in with my paint bucket. All right, Command D, deselect. Now the problem is that blue isn't helping me. So how can I contain it? I'm first going to get rid of it. I'm just going to select all the blue and then hit delete. So it's not there anymore. I'll keep gray on. Okay, now how can I fill in the tiger but not the background with these openings, uncontained shapes? Well, what I can do is I can make a duplicate of my black line art layer that will unlock it. Then I can right click and rasterize. And I'm going to label this one Let's do it violet. And I'm going to say uh, temp fills. And I'm actually going to use black on this and do some digital inking that I'm going to turn off later. And I'm just going to close those gaps. Sometimes it can be hard to identify where they are. Mine are not particularly difficult to see. But you want to be careful not to go into your color space at all. So I'm going to go back to a pressure sensitive so I don't interrupt the orange at all. Okay, now I can select from that layer. So that layer looks like this. And then I use the magic wand and I select the inside. And voila, it doesn't select the background. I've now contained it. Now I go to my flat color and I pick a color. Let's see. Paint bucket. Maybe I use this this color there and I drop it in. Or maybe I use this one here and I drop it in. Or maybe I use this one here and I drop it in. Or maybe I use this pink. Or maybe I use this blue or the green. So this is where flats start. I think I'm going to use a pretty bright yellow. All right. So looks ugly, but if I turn off my black and I turn off my background, it shows you what a flat color should look like. It's the American cheese on a cheeseburger. The problem is my color is just not very interesting yet. Choosing the right colors is tough. So I have some inspiration here. Now, just on my flat color, just with the paint bucket, and I'll do it on gray, I can very easily just hold down option, choose a color, drop it in where I think it will work, like the back of the mouth, the tongue. Why would you gray? As the background. So I can see equally where I have whites and where I have darks. If I have white as a background, it's harder to tell that the teeth are filled in, that the white of the eye is filled in. And if I use black, black can work. Black actually works pretty well for this. It's just nice to see it on all three because a spot illustration needs to be versatile on different backgrounds, like a sticker. So the goal is to have your coloring look good on all three types. And some people like to customize their background. Like I might unlock my gray and make it a light gray. So I can see what it looks like there with my line art. So maybe I'll keep the background like this while I'm filling it. So now I'm just on my flat color layer and I'm deciding kind of what colors are best. So maybe for the nose, I'll use this color. Maybe for the eye, I'll use this color. 